Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to One Million Cups. If this is your first time here, um, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what today will look like. We are gonna just do some thank yous and introductions. Um, we'll pass the mic around the room, and if you can just say who you are and who you're with, we would appreciate that. Um, you'll notice that the mic doesn't amplify, it's for the live stream, um, which brings me to our thanks to our sponsor, Field 59. We have Derek in the back here. Field 59 does all of the recordings and the live streams for One Million Cups, so if you ever can't make it or you think that there's an interesting topic and you'd like to um, point people to the presentation that day, you can find the link on our site and you can share that out and they can watch the magic unfold. Um, otherwise, you can always um, find the recorded presentations on our YouTube page, and you could Google One Million Cups Madison or um, go to our website and find the link there. Uh, we are also thankful for the coffee today, which is provided by Baker Tilly. It's from Crescendo. It's delicious. So thank you, Baker Tilly, and we have um, Danny here um, as a representative, so make sure that you give him a high five or a caffeinated smile when you see him this morning. Uh, finally, we um, on the announcement front, we have an event coming up at Nordic. If anybody is interested in joining the home office or consulting, that's um, coming up in May. You can get in contact with myself or Leah if you're interested in attending. It'll be at the Madison Blind, and is that May 6th? on May 6th in the evening. And on that note, I'm Rachel Neal. I'm one of the organizers of One Million Cups, and I also work at Nordic. Good morning, my name is Susan Schmitz, and I'm president of Downtown Madison Incorporated. I'm happy to be here, because I work right over there. <laughs> my name is uh, Jamel Ware, and I am your presenter today. I'm Kurt Peterson, co-founder of 32 Auctions, a platform for hosting and managing silent auctions online. Steve Claude, uh, co-founder of 32 Auctions. I'm Tom Willis. I'm a technology consultant in software engineering and intellectual property. I'm Dan Anderson with Baker Tilly. Dave Rasmussen with Extract Systems. Gretchen Lenz with CBRE. Sarah Nadi Skivaski, Catalyze. Garrett Lee. Woe and good point. Um, we're transforming your social good into digital currency. My name's Ed Graves with the library. Uh, I'm Will Robus with Discovery Product at UW Madison and Little Green Pencil. I'm Derek Gubler with Field 59, a software as a service for media companies and uh, premium content creators. I'm Kate Moran. I work with Disability Pride Madison and uh, I make money working on campus. My name is Zach Bieber. I'm with United Way of Dane County. Hi, I'm Colleen Clark. I'm Dane County's Equity and Criminal Justice Council Coordinator. I'm Amy Kiesling with Sustain Dane. Good morning, I'm Alex Ryan. I work for a large company in the solar industry. I'm going to get back into startups. Uh, I'm Kimberly Cho, and I'm with Labeled Branding. Um, we try to find a revolution starting with love and through evolution. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren Rock. Um, I'm at United Way of Dane County. I support our leadership giving groups, Key Club, and Women's Leadership. Hi, my name is Colleen Butler. I'm with the YWCA of Madison. Good morning. I'm Melanie Conklin. I am with Congressman Mark Pocan's office. Uh, I'm Drew Corson. I'm going to stand up for this because it's important. And I brought my own mic. Um, <laughs> so I'm running questions today, which I usually do. For those of you who haven't been here, um, we're going to have Q&A after Jamel's presentation. But to make things move a little more smoothly than sometimes they do when we're like waiting for people to ask questions, start thinking of questions now. And I'm going to cold call on people in the audience because I know most of your names. So uh, other than that, I'm Drew Corson. I'm an attorney at Niner Boucher. I work with startups and other businesses of all shapes and sizes. And I'm an organizer with a million cups. I just call him Socrates. And my name is Leah Anderson. Um, I am also an organizer of One Million Cups Madison. Um, I work for Nordic. And I actually do a lot of the, I own the home office hiring in the office. So if you know anybody who's looking for a job who might be interested in working for a um, really fantastic consulting firm that focuses on Epic, talk to me. And I think that's it. I am ready. All right, come on up. All right. <laughs> I have. How's everyone doing this morning? Great. I'm a pacer, so bear with me, all right? Before I start, I would like to say a few thank yous myself. 
One, I would like to thank my best friend and my brander, Kimberly Cho. Uh, every image that you see um, that IR usually presents for our members and for our advertising comes from her. I also would like to thank Brittany Sinclair, who helps with our social media, and the rest of the team that works with me to make IR possible. Ashley Robertson, Michael Langloss, uh, Amber Walker, Mikaela Berry. Um, without them, this would not be possible. So let's start out with this. I'm a millennial, all right? And I know, we had, well, I know we get a bad rap, but I love being a millennial. I do this because 10 years ago when I migrated here from Detroit, Michigan, I came here to go to UW, and once I graduated, I watched many of my peers leave this city. As I started a career here, I watched many more of my peers leave this city. For every three millennials that Madison brings in, we lose two. And those two are usually people of color. So I started asking, why? why? Why are people leaving? Most of the time, people are leaving to go to larger urban meccas. Um, they're, they're going to cities where they have a better work-life balance. Let me talk to you a little bit about the needs of millennials. There are three things that we want as millennials. Sorry, I'm blocking the screen. <laughs> I probably, that's why the podium's there, but I don't want to stand behind it. Um, millennials demand convenience, we want flexibility, and we crave a work-life balance, more so than any generation before us. We can't exist without those things. So when people are leaving to go to larger cities, they're leaving because they're seeking for a work-life balance, for an entertainment option that Madison doesn't provide. The original estimation for millennials in the workforce was that by 2020, we would take over the workforce. We would be more than 50%. However, last year, First quarter 2015, millennials surpassed boomers and Xers in the workforce, making up 53.5 million workers. So let's talk about the demographics of millennials. In the next 10 to 60 years, our nation is going to see a transformation. The largest populations in our country will be Latinos. Asians and mixed-race people, followed by blacks and then whites. The Midwest has the lowest rates of Latinos, blacks, and Asians. So that means that if Madison cannot attract and retain people of color, we will be missing out on a $6 billion shift in spending power. Millennials itself means diversity. We are the most diverse generation our nation has ever seen. Kevin Kelly, the founder and uh, executive editor of Wired, said that technology is a way to evolve the evolution. It's a way to explore possibilities and opportunities and create more. Now, IR does not provide hardware or equipment. We are social technology. We are here to evolve our community into what it can be, to take us from today to tomorrow without missing a beat. What exactly is IR? In order to understand it, we have to talk about a few definitions. Now we all know what intellect is, so I'm not gonna really get into that. But the word ratchet is where people get tripped up. There are two meanings of ratchet. One, we all know it as a tool. The second meaning is a euphemism that is often negatively associated with urbanism. But it also is a word that glorifies the beauty of urbanism. Let me give you some visuals of people that I, that embody what IR is. So we have Drake and Beyonce. 
These are entertainers. They have proven their business models. Drake most recently when he signed his deal with Apple. We have astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson who makes space seem like the coolest thing ever. We have Ellen DeGeneres who every day gets on, stay, gets on her show and uh, gives us all of her. We have Taraji P. Henson and uh, daughter of Will and Jada Pickett Smith, Willow Smith. But the most famous of the IR embodiments are our president and the, our vice president. They are what IR is. They are both intellectual and they both bring us everything, their whole selves, with, with them. They are IR. I am IR. And I guarantee some of you are IR. Susan's IR. She's a member. What's the problem? The problem is, is that Madison does a horrible job at retaining people of color in, the, in professional fields. So what is the solution? We're the solution. And our solution is to make Madison more attractive to prof young professionals of color, particularly in the millennial category. Um, but we do more than that. We also want to provide companies with a top talent pool base. So while I call this the a back end to diversity, now many companies on the inside focus on retaining and attracting diverse talent. But you cannot keep a millennial in a city just because of the pay, just because of the benefits. You have to have that work-life balance to go with it. And IR provides that. <coughs> Our mission. IR is an urban country club aimed at, a, a, at diverse millennials. IR cultivates premium lifestyle events with an urban twist, providing our members with innovative opportunities to connect with one another, access exclusive venues, and the chance to discover the allure of greater Madison community. We live in a beautiful city. We live in a very thriving city. And people need to see that. But unless people feel comfortable exploring the city the way the majority of the city explores the city, we're missing out on something very essential. IR is membership base. Our members are young, they're old, they're black, they're white, they're Asian, they're Latina. We bring together some of the most diverse groups of millennials that this city has been able to do. I want to tell you a story about Corey Black. This was the second event that IR did last year. It was a paint night at Willie Street, pa Willie Street Paint Bar. Um, and Corey Black is a Madison native, a millennial. After this event, she came up to the instructor, Ashley Robertson of West Label Art, and said, I've lived here my entire life and I've never been in a room that looked like this. Everyone in our city is represented in this picture. IR thrives to represent the entirety of our nation, to bring into our community an aspect of diversity that takes us from talking about it to living it. But IR is kind of difficult to explain. I say you got to come experience it. Until you experience it, you won't really know what I'm talking about. So here's your first opportunity, your next opportunity to experience it. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I forgot I added this slide. Let's go back, guys. Let's go back, guys. This is important. This is important stuff here. <coughs> Beautiful picture, huh? Isn't that a gorgeous picture? <laughs> At IR, we are social innovators. And in fact, we're so solutionaries. That is what we do. We revolutionize social events. We're going to bring something beautiful to our city. Now, experience in IR. All right. 
Next opportunity, Monday, April 18th, we host what's called Hoppy Hours. Now, Hoppy Hours are just an opportunity to go take over a bar downtown. Um, the bar we'll be taking over this time from 5 to 7 will be the Rigby. They have 25 cent wings and $3 taps and rails. I know y'all like to drink, because I do. Um, we do this every month. We do it the Monday before our premium event of the month. So I do hope that you all try to make it out. Because um, again, we're not just talking diversity. It's time to live diversity. Our event for April will be a listening party. One thing I truly believe in, one of my personal beliefs is that small businesses uh, and people are what make America thrive. So we are going to be showcasing two very talented local artists. One, Landon Devon, is a Madison native. And the second one, Fivey, is a Milwaukee um, resident who will be coming in. And this is the first time IR will ever do anything that's party-like. So afterwards, we will turn it over from a listening party to a nice party um, with uh, upcoming DJ, Denny, DJ Kenny Hoopla, who actually just booked two tours. So I'm glad that we get to have him before the world knows him. Um, we'll be at Bright Red Studios uh, off East Washington. Now, everybody, I want you to take out your phone. I'm going to Snapchat you all doing this. Everybody take out your phone, take out your phone, take out your phone. <coughs> if you have an Instagram, if you have a Twitter, if you have a Facebook, find us. And as you guys are finding it, I'm going to add you to my Snapchat, all right? I'm watching y'all. Everybody right now is on their phone. They're about to go find us on. If you're already following us, you just sit there and look pretty. Be on the Snapchat. <laughs> Millennials live on social media. This is our life. If you aren't on social media, you're missing out on a great opportunity to connect with the millennial generation. If you have any questions for me that you don't get to ask today, please feel free to contact me at intellectualratchet at gmail.com. Let me get back to my remote. Now, let's talk about our business model. Our website is www.intellectualratchet.com. We are a membership-based organization. All of 2015, everything that we did was self-funded by myself until December 21st when I launched our membership base. Now we are self-sustaining and growing. In three months, we have attained 40 members, 41. We got one last night, 41 members now. Um, so how do we work? For one person, it's $30 a month. This gets you access to our events. It gets you a VIP experience. It gets you a <coughs> gift to commemorate the event. Even if you weren't able to make it, you still get your gift. And it also gives you community perks. The community perks we have right now are tickets to Overture Center um, and tickets to the NPRs of the mall. Um, we are always looking for more community partnerships. Or if there are two of you, because a lot of people have a second half, we have a couple membership, which is $50 per month, it gets you the exact same thing. That is how I are sustained itself. So. Oh. <laughs> I lost the mic. <laughs> um, so. My ask for you today is to become a social solutionary. Help us take our city to what it can be by focusing on today with the foresight of tomorrow. IR is millennial run. We know what we want and we know what we need, but we need you all to continue making it possible. Thank you. I'm not afraid to cold call. And if you could try to work the word socialutionary into your question. Not really anything about socialutionarianism, that would be great. Um, so throw a hand up, I'll bring the mic to you, um, and just feel free to put your hand up while someone else is asking so we can keep it rolling. So any questions, comments, feedback? Um, your focus right now is on the Madison community. Do you see this growing beyond Madison? Yes, I do. I see that uh, I, s I can see IR in other cities that look very similar 
to Madison. Mm -hmm. So that's a Denver or Seattle or Portland. These are majority white cities um, that all have great intentions of creating diversity, but need help. Um, and we believe that we can help be the solution to those cities as well. In addition to One Million Cups, how else are you reaching out to millennials? Um, most of our uh, campaigning is done online. Um, I'm also out in the community every day talking to people. Uh, last night we did a presentation at the Black Chamber of Commerce. Um, we will be doing a presentation at First Weber in April. I am also looking to connect with other companies and businesses that are looking um, for something like R to present either to their staff that they already have or to help them um, with the attracting of new uh, of, um, of young professionals so cool. I, I took your uh, your online survey uh, to check on my ratchet and um, you know I what, what I, was I, your I, score? I, thought I got a really low score, but I thought it was kind of an age bias. Thing. It wasn't, you know, I mean, so, uh, so I felt just age bias, you know, kind of as a Generation X guy, um, which was cool. But I mean, how, 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 what are you kind of looking for in terms of like, uh, you know, Generation X baby boomer participation in your, you know, your socialutionaryism um, to kind of kind of work with 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 helping retain millennials in the, in the Madison area? I actually think Susan should answer that question. Uh, Susan is uh, one of our IR members. Um, and uh, I, th I think that, uh, I I'm gonna say a little bit, but then I actually am gonna let Susan speak. Um, what Xers and Boomers can do I provide resources. We need access to venues. We need access to spaces that are going to host us and allow us to create the entertainments um, that we are looking for. Um, we need help with advertising. We need help with websites. There are many different ways that you can get involved and help uh, IR um, create the city that we believe we can have. So Susan, can you tell us why you're an IR member? One of the um, one of the words up there was kind of kind of triggered something, and it was discover. Um, I'm a I'm a I'm an old boomer, and I'm 67 years old. So, um, but uh, and I'm a, a native of this community, and and I'll tell you, with um, I grew up in a in this white city, and, I, and you know how white it has been. And and um, my my I would say like kind of a, my journey. Um, I I've always known that it's not been Madison can do better than that. And um, now with my role at DMI as um, as president, and I've been there going on 18 years. Um, I'm in a position where I, I'm leading a group that can really make a difference. So um, we are trying to make a difference. We're trying to be more diverse ourselves. Uh, we've got fi we have 500 members, and we need to make sure that this downtown is more diverse. And for me personally, my life is so much richer. It's so m it's so much better to have different friends, different voices at the table. It's, um, I'm kind of bored with my generation. <laughs> so I'll tell you, this, this, um, I'm, my, it's so much better. Our organization's gonna be better and then I hope our, our downtown is better and we see more minority owned businesses, et cetera. And uh, Jamel has helped so much. We met kind of by happenstance and it's just been terrific. So um, I would recommend that you join my art. <laughs> So is that okay? That's perfect, thank you. <laughs> Question over here. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about kind of what your vision is for how you might partner with businesses and organizations in the future. Like what, not just how businesses can support IR, but how businesses can benefit from partnership with IR and okay. what that might look like for organizations that want to partner with you to retain diverse talent. Okay. Um, things that uh, 
IR can offer our millennial consultation. I'm a very outspoken millennial. Um, I have tried to fit into many nine to five jobs and it just didn't work for me. But I know that many people aren't as uh, much of risk takers as myself and just will walk away. Um, so I do want to help companies understand how millennials function, how they think, um, perhaps to help them uh, with events that make uh, their millennials feel more like it, more at home. Um, those are just a few things off the top of my head, and uh, it, I believe every company is different. Every person has a different need, so I'm always willing to sit down with a company that may have some kind of interest in what IR does and see how we can work together. Will you offer um, opportunities for companies to purchase memberships for staff? Yes. Companies can purchase memberships for their staff, um, for their millennial staff, for their Gen X or Boomer staff, whoever wants to be a part of IR. We will offer uh, group discounts for things like that, um, as well as provide uh, a, a talent base for companies. Now, um, when I sat down um, with Rachel, she asked me, well, how do you know that it's top talent? And uh, one, membership is self-selected, but we do target young professionals. We are targeting people that are leaving uh, undergrad or graduate school that are here in um, thriving companies and businesses. That's our target audience. So we, and one, most people aren't going to pay $30, $50 a month if they don't have the means to do so. And that's usually young professionals that do have that means to do so. So thanks for that. Hey, Jamal. Garrett. Awesome presentation again. Uh, so I sort of self-identify as a social innovator. Um, I've never heard the term solutionary, but I, I'm, I'm curious. Um, what sorts of ways do you see IR promoting social movements, and how can IR transform Madison into some sort of leadership role where we show the millennials how to go about changing our world? I think IR does that um, on the basis of who makes up the IR staff. Um, we are all social justice based individuals and naturally because of that the material that we put out on social media reflects that of, of justice and revolution. Um, so I think that what we're providing is a platform for people to have something to connect to and to voice their thoughts and opinions. I think what takes, what makes us social solutionaries, it's not just the revolution part, but the idea of bringing economic power to social justice. There are many social justice groups, there are many social justice organizations, and they all are based in nonprofit. And with nonprofit, you can't build an economic platform. And we want to be able to build an economic platform that will help social justice movements, that will give voice to social justice movements. So, um, so just sort of a follow-up question. Are mm -hmm. there um, ongoing movements or organizations that you're partnering with um, that, that uh, yeah? At this time, no. Um, IR was, our launch date was April 19th, uh, 2015. I ran the company um, while working a full-time job. I have only been self-employed 30 days. Um, so I do hope, I, I say all that to say that I haven't had the time, but I do now have the time. Um, but as of right now, there, there are no connections that we strongly have. So you describe yourself as an urban country club, um, but right now, I mean, it it's, seems like it's virtual, like it moves from place to place. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have any plans or thoughts about having a, a set space for IR? I would love to have a brick and mortar. Um, we definitely need, uh, th that's what will take IR to the next level, to be able to have a community where people can drop in at any time um, to come and just take that, that nine to five mask off and just relax. Um, so that is definitely, in the hopes and the plans for IR. Any other questions before I start calling on people? I think we have time for a couple more. Melanie. Well, I don't know if this question will apply to anybody else here, but um, I've worked for a lot of elected officials. Um, that's been my career, communications. 
um, and I've heard them talking about a lot of what you're talking about, the problems with the brain drain, the problems keeping talent here, the problems making it a welcoming community for everyone. Is there a role for government or for elected officials in what you're doing? Is there a way that all these people who talk about this as problems can help? <laughs> <laughs> was not prepared for that. Don't have an answer. <laughs> that was a great question. Um, I'm going to say, uh, honestly, I don't have an answer for you right now, but I would love to sit down with you after I get some time to wrap my brain around that. <laughs> you're going to get my business. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, I would like to do something before we wrap up. Um, I got a few giveaways here. I want to ask a few questions. Hold on, I got to change the screen. It messes up my questions. Can't give away answers. Oh, all right, I'll start with this question though. What's the word that describes IR? Anybody, just shout out. Social oh, social solutionaries. You get a snapback <laughs> fitted. <laughs> <laughs> now my remote's not working. <laughs> All right. What is... Hmm. Somebody tell me the euphemism of ratchet. You guys paying attention? Euphemism? Don't be afraid. What's the euphemism of ratchet? <laughs> 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 That's close enough. I'll, I'll say well, I'll work with that. Welcome to the family. <laughs> All right. How can you get in contact with me after today? Instagram, Facebook, Gmail. Oh, you just wanted a banner. Welcome to the family. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that's all I have for you. I do have some uh, other um, wristbands up here. I do believe in family. I believe that we are creating uh, a, a social family, not just a friends, but a place where you can come and be yourself, which is really what is most important to me. It's just having places where people feel like they can bring their whole entirety. Um, so thank you so much for allowing me to take up your morning. Um, I have enough wristbands for everybody, so everyone will get one, all right?